Hello, viewers. I am Pastor Bill Nibuka from his palace, sitting on a hill. In, I'm here to preach on a topic that says, Hold on to the truth. Holding on to the truth. Can we pray? Almighty and everlasting Father, thank you for the opportunity given to us to hear your word and to share your word. Father, as the word goes forth, may it touch every life in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, come and take charge. I decrease that you may increase in my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. As I said earlier, our topic is holding on to the truth. We are going to read from the book of Daniel chapter 3, verse 12. And it says, There were certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and folly, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I set up. I will stop here. But I wanted to read down. So if you read down, you will see where it ended. This place is telling us about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The king, King Nebuchadnezzar, commanded everybody to bow down to a golden image. So these two young men, they knew that bowing down to image is wrong. It is condemned in the book of Exodus chapter 20. That you should not bow down to anything, anything in likeness of man, you should not bow down to it. So the king put that law, and that king, the king put this law because of these three men. Because he knows that they are serving a living God. He knows that they are committed to their gods. So he was looking for an opportunity to punish them. He was looking for, uh, to, uh, for an opportunity to frustrate them. So Every other person bowed to that image. So how did they know that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not bow? Because all eyes were on them. They went and reported to the king that these three men are not serving the God they are serving. How? The king was really angry. He came and met them, asked them the question, is it true that they are not bowing down to the image? They replied to him and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said, the king, oh King Nebuchadnezzar, you are not careful to answer them in this matter because they know that they are standing on the truth, because they, are not, they know that they are standing on the other side. The Bible says, If God can be for us, who can be against us? They know that word, they were not afraid of what the king will do. If you read down, the king wanted to intimidate them, he wanted to put fear in them. He said, that if they did not bow to that image, that he will increase the fight because he has already put fire that anybody, any person that did not bow to that image shall be put into that fire. So he told them that if they refuse to bow, that he's going to increase that fire seven times the way it was burning before. Thinking that if he says it, they will change their minds. When he said it, they even they increased their faith. They said we are careless to. They are careless to think about what they are saying. They refuse to heed to his commands. So the king went ahead and told them to tie them and put them in the fire. They brought the rope. They were not afraid. They were tying them. People were surprised. Said, ah, what kind of monkeys are these? They tied them, carried them, put inside the fire. The fire consumed the people that carried them to the fire. But as God will have it, their life were saved. But to themselves, they don't even know that their life will be saved. But their own concern is that they are standing on the truth. That they, want, they don't want to soil themselves in evil. But today, what is happening? When we do one wrong thing, we use somebody as an excuse. We start blaming another person. People are now having sex with dogs. We ask them, say that uh, they forced them. When they went each day, they brought the dog. But these people, they stood on the truth. 
they didn't, they didn't even care to know whether they would die. The most important thing is where will you go when you die? They know that when they die, they are going to meet God. So they are not afraid of death. They are not afraid of what King was about to do. They are not afraid of what the whole city was doing. But their own concern is what God wants. Their, 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 their mind is made up to do the will of God. Their mind is made up to serve the living God. They are not afraid of death. So the problem we have today is that we are afraid of death. Now our friends push us to commit sin. So many people enter into court because of what? Influence, because of fear. So many people enter into prostitution because of what? Fear. So many people are doing one bad thing or the other. Some have visited the doctor because of what? Fear. If I don't go, they will kill me. At last, the person will still die. Is it not better you die the death of a righteous and you know where you are going than dying miserably and dying in hellfire? Standing on the truth, holding on the, onto the truth. We need to hold onto the truth we have. And the truth is what? The word of God. Praise the Lord. So, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I, I, I pray that we will see that this kind of young people in this hour time. God is so much concerned about young people. Even society are concerned about young people. All the things done in the city, it is young people they used to do it. So why is everybody interested in young people? Because they are full of strength. What do you use the strength God gave you to do? To fight? To do one thing for the other? Why can't you use your strength to serve God? Why can't you convert that your strength? To something profitable. Why can't you use your strength to create impact to your world? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego turned the whole city. Till today, their names have not been deleted. Till today, the names of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are held. Why can't we make our names to be held for good and not for evil? It is good to hold on to the truth. Hallelujah. Let's hold on to the truth. No matter the situation, no matter the circumstance, we will all die one day. One day we will all die. So it's better for you to die when you are doing the right thing than to die when you are doing the wrong thing. It is that that puts fear in the life of a man. Why can't you shun fear? So see how God saved the life of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Another incident like this happens. Daniel. Daniel refused to eat from the king's plate because he knew that most of those things are sacrificed to him. He refused. And the Bible recorded that his flesh was better than, was fresher than other people that ate from the king's pot. And the name of Daniel is known today. Even when they also asked him to serve another God, he refused. Daniel was not afraid of entering into lion's den. You know, in those days, the king would tell you the consequence of not obeying his He would tell you, this one, not that you don't know. He knows that if you don't bow down, if you don't serve that God, that he will be thrown into lion's den. He knew about it. So everything he's doing, he's doing it with open eyes. So when the time came for them to put him in lion's den, he was not afraid. They carried him and put him in the lion's den. And lions became his friends. So as you see, sometimes those things we are afraid of are even afraid of us. We don't need to fear. The Bible said we should not be afraid. We should not be afraid. They say that fear is a torment. Fear is look at these two incidences. These two incidents. The other one fire, the other one lions den. And all of them we are saved. It was even the king, king that the king was one that became afraid. Every morning he rushed to Lion's Den and said, eh, Daniel, did your God save you? Because he knows that God can save. Had it been Daniel obeyed them because of fear, he would have been a dead man and entered into hellfire. But God saved him. So I want to encourage us to hold on to that, even if they are killing you. Stand on the truth. Don't deviate from the truth. The Bible says that 
You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You shall know Jesus and Jesus will set you free. Sometimes you see old men, old women. It's all going to stand on the truth, to tell people the truth. Because they are the people that are alive, when certain things happen, they will keep quiet and things will be spoiled. Innocent people will be dying. They won't even say the truth. Anywhere you are, tell people the truth. Caution the young ones around you. Caution people around you. Don't join multitude to be here. Why can't you tell people the truth? Why can't you stand on the truth? Why can't you hold on to the truth? As Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. Let's hold on to the truth. When you do the writing, there's a kind of joy that will overflow right inside of you because you did the writing. But, what, but when you are doing the wrong thing, you will not be comforted. Your heart will not be at peace. May the Lord help us. Let the Spirit of God teach us how to hold on to the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Here comes the end of today's episode. For partnership, prayer, and counseling, you can contact us on the numbers you are seeing on the screen. I am Pastor Blue here. I still remain your host. See you in the next episode. Bye.